Good day. It's Dave Peck here with Grid Metals. I'm Vice President of Exploration and Business Development, and I'm here to speak to you today about Grid's uh, emerging integrated and very unique uh, lithium and nickel uh, project in Southeast Manitoba, which is our cornerstone asset. Grid's uh, primarily trading on the Toronto Stock Exchange Venture Exchange under the ticker GRDM. And we're a small market cap company, but we've got uh, a really clear path to a strong increase in re-rating of the company, basically, and we're on that path now. So lots of news to share with you today. Dave, thank you very much for the introduction. Um, it's good to talk, to talk to you again. I last spoke to you about 10 weeks ago at the end of April. I liked the company then, and I thought this company's got great potential. When I look back over the last 10 weeks, your news flow has been pretty punchy, and I thought, well, that's great, all going in the right direction. And then I've looked at your... Um, share price chart and you've pretty much halved in value you've gone from you went from when we when we spoke it was around 19 cents you topped at 22 and we're now at 11 12 so um the company's gone in the right direction on the ground in terms of the, the work flow the share price has gone in the wrong direction along with so many other junior um yeah. mining stocks um one could argue that means you're even better value than you were before but um Lots to talk about, so let's get stuck into kind of your main developments in the last uh, two or three months. Thanks, Merlin. Good to see you again. Um, we've really focused uh, this year, and we'll, it will be our focus going forward on our Bird River Belt project in southeast Manitoba. We'll be coming up with a splashy name for it. Uh, it's just come into view that we have a unique opportunity to develop at the same time on the same footprint. Uh, spodumene uh, mine and two nickel copper PGE mines, uh, basically okay. delivering all the battery metals that the industry wants, uh, especially the North American auto industry, from one so, place. So, so I, I know I know the projects of Donna Lake Lithium yeah. and and um, Macqua Mayville kind of uh, nickel. Co, uh, nickel copper PGE. Uh, so yeah. are you are you now taking kind of a unified um, ta- uh, approach to this and putting it under one? project name, um, Bird River. Yes. Well, the, the name will be uh, introduced shortly, but for now, we're going to call it the Bird River, just geographic reference, geological reference. Yes. So um, it'll, I, it, it, it's, we're moving in that direction very rapidly. Um, and it became very clear to us with, you know, looking around, scanning the peer companies, uh, what they've got in lithium and nickel. Nobody has both on the same footprint. And if somebody's looking for that kind of integrated one-stop shop to get all your battery metals, then we'll be basically the only one in the queue um, that can get there and very quickly, we think. Just before we actually started recording, uh, you mentioned that you might be able to, um, or you're kind of targeting breaking ground. And um, uh, my, my question to you was, is that on the, on the, on the nickel and the, the copper at um, Macqua Mayville? And... You're rather surprisingly, because that's at a PEA stage, you know, that's at a kind of a, a, yeah. a study stage. Rather surprisingly, you said to me, uh, it might actually be on the lithium. Do you want to just kind of unpack that a bit? Yeah, so the lithium is uh, very straightforward geologically. We'll be moving into uh, resource drilling uh, very shortly and expect to have a maiden resource by the end of the year, something we hope in the sort of six to eight million ton range, one and a half percent lithium near surface outcropping actually. Very simple vertical uh, geometry. And the, the key to this is that we have an offtake agreement with Sinomine Canada, who operate the Tanko rare metal mine, which is actually right beside one of our uh, three projects here, uh, beside the Macqua Nickel uh, project. So it's a uh, pretty straightforward uh, trucking uh, raw ore, basically unprocessed ore, to Tanko using their SPOD circuit. They're the only SPOD you mean operation currently in Canada, uh, Hard Rock Spodumene, um, and we'll uh, potentially see early cash flow from that that would help finance, you know, the construction of a concentrator for initially nickel, copper, cobalt from the two nickel projects, and then eventually potentially looking at a, a circuit for spodumene there. So we have the right to sell any product that we want uh, to Tanko. Uh, they've basically got the, the, the offtake rights for those products, whatever they are, but it's really in our hands to decide how far we want to process uh, the material from Donner Lake. 
what's the I'm, I, I'm not up to speed on my um, <clears throat> uh, lithium oxide concentrate or kind of um, ore prices. You know, what would you get um, on the market? I don't want to kind of go into the the, the exact um, commercial terms that you've got with Tanko unless they're public. They're not. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what? What would if if you could sell it for a kind of a hundred percent of the price? What what would that look like per ton? So the spot con pricing now a lot of it's uh, based on Chinese uh, market pricing. Uh, it's it's north of forty thousand US a ton for what they call SC six or spodumene concentrate six percent uh, lithium oxide grade. Then so you can translate that back into what the you know the in situ value of the ore would be. Everybody's got to make money, um, so we're hopeful we can have a margin of you know two to four hundred dollars a ton. Uh, just from raw ore, not having to process, not having to have that concentrator in place. Um, okay. Just, yeah, so that kind of ballpark right now. You've got there's already a historical resource um, which is not uh, compliant, not, no. no. But it was it was around just below four million tons, and yeah. I think that was on the the main dike, wasn't it? it? It was primarily on the main dike. There was a small component of uh, from four drill holes actually. So take that with a grain of salt, but. We, we really focused this year on drilling off the other dike, the Northwest Dike. So they're both in the same position now to go quickly into resource uh, delineation. Uh, we put the permit application that we expect to have that in hand in the next couple of weeks. So we could start drilling here before the end of the summer and putting that resource uh, into compliance and getting a technical report out on that hopefully by the end of the year. And because you don't have to do any downstream infrastructure, really, it's a simple, it's a, it's a quarrying exercise, isn't it? It's, it's, well, uh, it's, if, exactly. Yeah. So, so we're getting costs done on it now on the, on the mining car. We have a pretty good handle on what the shallow open pits would generate in terms of stripping and, uh, you know, depth we'd want to mine, but it, it, it's a very clear path to, you know, getting two, three, four hundred thousand tons per year out of just the raw ore and directly sending it across to Tanko. So this really puts us in a unique position in the space for junior uh, developers uh, to have revenue coming in so early and not necessarily having to pull the trigger on the bigger nickel copper PGE project right away but to building up the war chest and uh, reducing the financing requirements for the project. I, I, I will come on to the, 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 the nickel and the, all of that, but yeah. just, come, just, just to understand what your kind of approach and your, your attack plan is for the, for the lithium resource. Um, in one of your n- recent news releases, there was a map showing the lithium creeks, the, 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 the lithium um, claims with yeah. a v- variety of different kind of camps and different dike swarms. Um, I've just kind of wrote down a few of the names. I mean, the, I, 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 you know, one of them was called Why Not? Cat Creek Pegmatite, West East Dikes, North Creek Dikes, West Dike Swarm, South Dikes, Other Dikes. You know, it, it, there, there was a kind of a whole, um, an array of different uh, lithium potential. And you've, you've done a recent kind of round of drilling on the Northwest Dike. Yes. Um, and you talk about, continuing to map and prospect for the other dikes. Uh, remind me what the cover situation is and, and how you go about that, that mapping process. So the crews are out now. They've been out for about a month. Um, they're really focused on Donner Lake now. We've got some other properties, smaller uh, blocks of claims in the belt. There'll be more news coming out on those. We've done some initial sampling. Uh, with some encouraging looking um, outcrops of spodumene bearing pegmatites. But this project, Donner Lake, is about an eight kilometer, nine kilometer long, what we call favorable horizon, which is really the contact zone between a big granite batholith to the south and the greenstone rocks to the north. And the pegmatites favorably develop in terms of you know, the, the tonnage potential, their size, um, their thickness along that margin uh, within the greenstones themselves, especially in gra- gabbros and, and basalts. And that contact really has only been explored in the area of the Northwest Dike and Main Dikes. A lot of these other dikes have just been mapped. There's no actual sampling for lithium. So that program is really that, that we're doing now is out there to find out what else we have 
that's outcropping. The cover is uh, typical shield cover. There's a bit of till, a uh, bit of bit of uh, soil, uh, usual kind of boreal forest cover with swampy ground in the low lying yeah. areas. So they're not all going to outcrop, um, but we've got uh, various other methods to detect uh, the dikes that aren't outcropping, um, mainly lithogeochemistry, where we're looking for lithium halo anomalies around spodumene bearing pegmatites. And that's a tried and proven method uh, in this area, actually. And our current VP of lithium exploration, Kerry Galischuk, is uh, a world expert on this approach, and he's directing that program and we'll have lots of data and hopefully lots of anomalies generated. And, uh, and will you be able to cover the full eight kilometers of that favorable yeah. horizon in this field season? Yeah, we expect to be able to work till the snow flies, which uh, of course in Winnipeg, you never know. It could be October, it could be November, it could even be late September. But if we get a good year, we should be working there to the end of October. So there's still lots of time. Uh, we've got all the equipment needed to move around. Uh, even in the swampy areas. So crews are out there. They're doing lots of good work and seeing lots of interesting rocks and lots to report on after the program. Great. And it, it, are the pegmatites um, uh, resistant, more resistant yes. kind of ero erosionally? So they, you, you sometimes get a topographic assist from uh, the, the, the pegma pegmatites. Not always, but I, um, sometimes you, get, you can see them more clearly than the... It, it, very much so. In fact, with just air photos uh, and, you know, good re resolution air photos, you can pick up potentially, you know, white uh, pegmatites sticking out of the ground around black uh, cover rocks, lower lying areas, the basalts and gabbros. So it really is black and white. Have you thought of flying a, li a LIDAR service yes, along, uh, along that horizon? Because that will cut through the vegetation. You can really do some nice, um, um, uh, what are they called, first, first derivatives on that kind of stuff. For sure. Yeah, hyperspectral or LIDAR, which is uh, basically air photo uh, uh, sort of targeting. They both work. Um, LIDAR is more available. Uh, you don't have to wait months to put in your order with the satellite. So that's something we're going to want anyway for, you know, engineering, planning, infrastructure yeah. development. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll be looking at that uh, sometime <clears throat> later this year as well. Um, Best in the fall. Before the snow and after the leaves fall off. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, great. Oh, how exciting! I learned through repetition, and it's coming back to me. <laughs> what you spoke to me about, um, Corey um, Gelischek and his um, kind of geochemical approach. Um, now, if you're doing, let's say, three hundred thousand tons per annum, you'd presumably you'd want to have three or four years of kind of the, the shallow stuff sticking out of the top. So you'll be, you know, you're. I'm, I'm just thinking out loud, kind of conceptually, you'll be wanting to kind of, kind of get close to that million tons as a kind of quarrying operation, quite separate to the, yeah. um, to the bigger, longer term resource that you'd want to do on your own terms in, with your own planning schedule. But it, just in terms of the kind of the route to cash flow, it, so, it's a, it, it, am I in the right ballpark? Yeah, and I think the ramp up from you know that two or 300,000 tons on the spot, you mean to something closer to a million will be all sort of interleaved and worked out with the longer term mining plan for the integrated project. Uh, we definitely see a, an advantage of going smaller and higher grade on the base metals, uh, MACWA especially, uh, if we can reduce the sort of the footprint of the open pit, concentrate on the higher grade core, uh, take a few less tons out initially anyway, and get the feed grade up and the strip ratio down where Internally, we've seen that as a big advantage, and that'll be part of the, the new PEA study we've just started with MICON International, and that uh, kicked off last month, and uh, we hope to have that finished in about three months, and that'll be coming out uh, this sort of later in the fall as the benchmark uh, for the, the new evaluation of the you know, combined macro Mabel project. So just to, just so I can kind of get the sequencing right in my head. So resource drilling is going to continue on the pegmatite dikes. On yes. the northwest zone, I saw in one of your news releases, you were talking about you've got kind of 600 meters of strike and about 250 meters of depth. Yeah. Um, you talk about these things being four or five meters thick, Truth running this, yeah. um, one, one 1.2 to 1.5 kind of percent lithium yeah. dioxide. 
Then with some higher grade sections, yeah. Yeah. So you're going to continue to drill out those subvertical dikes. Yes. You're going to f- you're going to allocate or kind of um, start mentally planning for uh, quarrying operation on the the open cuts to kind of just take down the the open cuts where you can for quick cash flow. And you're going to explore along the eight kilometers to pick up new anomalies through right. lithium geochemistry in the summer program to have a pipeline of resource to show that there's potential for this not to grow from uh, the historic resource of under 4 million tons to six to eight to, but potentially and add on to that beyond that. Correct. Um, what's the tanko existing resource that they've got in China mine? It's not published. Um, so I, I don't know the answer to that. I just know that they've got a fair stockpile and they've been processing it at a slow rate and they're trying to expand their spodumene circuit. They're shipping spot already um, and it's going directly to uh, China via, I think, uh, a combination of rail and truck. I'm not 100% on that at the moment. So it goes out to the West Coast and and off to China. But it operated for years before it was owned by the Chinese, didn't it? But uh, but owned by Cabot Corporation out of the US, a big uh, chemicals company. And they uh, really focused on cesium um, up until very recently. There was no spodumene circuit. So that's new uh, for Tanko. But obviously with the lithium market looking really good in the long haul with the EV uh, explosion and you know, the need for battery metals, that's a, a, a real cash generator for them. And um, remind me of the distances between the Donner Lake, kind of the, the, the main dike and the Northwest Dike to the Tanko plant and to your potential site of your um, nickel, copper, cobalt plant. Yeah, the nickel, copper, cobalt plant would likely be built at Mayville. Um, it's just uh, for permitting. The southern, that's the northern the, one. Oh, okay, one. the northern one. So Donner Lake is really on the same claim block as Mayville, the nickel deposit there. And they're literally a couple of kilometers apart. The uh, the main nickel copper deposit at Mayville is called the M2. And that's uh, just, yeah, a couple of kilometers north of these uh, two main dikes, the main dike and the northwest dike. From there, um, just as the crow flies, um, it's about 30 kilometers to Tanko, to the mine and to Mayville, which is basically directly adjacent to the Tanko mine site. So our Maqua nickel deposit sits a few kilometers to the uh, west of uh, the Tanko mine. Okay. So it's, it's, it's eminently possible to truck your yes. quarried spodumene ore to Tanko. We'll look at, you know, probably 10 to $15 a ton extra cost to move yeah. that ore from Mayville through an existing road network, uh, exactly what the route will be. You know, we have to talk to the government. Some of these are public roads, so there's got to be some kind of arrangement and accommodation yeah. made with the government. Some are private roads, a um, little easier to deal with. And, uh, yeah, that, that kind of work is going to be part of the, the PEA, both for Macro and Mayville, as well as we hope to start a PA in the new year on, on Donner Lake. Based on and that new resource system. In the PEA that you're doing with Micon on yeah. Macro Mayville, is there, um, are you thinking about potentially adding on the, the optionality to have the circuits that you can process volumine through that? That um, won't uh, come in until we start uh, an integrated pre feasibility study. So the current project schedule, just in a snapshot, the updated PEA on Macro Mayville Nickel. Uh, to be done before the end of this year. A new PEA, the first one on a new resource estimate for Donner Lake starting early next year and hopefully finish before mid-year. And then the startup right away of an integrated pre-feasibility study on you know the lithium, nickel, copper as one project. And then right on the heels of that, you know, with positive results, so right into feasibility. Are there any synergies of... Um, I- Forgive my ignorance. Just, I mean, is it just the fact that you'd have a base metal PGE, PGE circuit, and a, and a, is it just sharing the the infrastructure, and you'd have a spodumene circuit? I mean, they're, they're basically separate processes, aren't they? Yeah, they're, they're very different. Um, some parts of it could be shared, and it depends on how you want to campaign the ore. 
I mean, even Macquarie and Mayville, Mayville ha- will produce two concentrates because it's more copper rich. There would be a separate copper and nickel con from the Mayville feed. Um, and then Mac was just a straight nickel con or bulk con. It's nickel rich. So the lithium, so, we're still working out the detail. We just started uh, initial MET testing on the Northwest Dyke material that we drilled uh, in the previous winter. So that material has gone off to XPS Labs in Sudbury, and they've started work on that already. And they'll do another round of work uh, on the main dike from some uh, quarter core samples we were able to uh, collect from the 2018 drilling the company did on the main dike. From the pictures in your recent news releases, that spodium looks very coarse and very, um, um, well, crystalline, um, you know, euhedral. Um, that presumably is a good thing. Yeah, although, I mean, half of the, I'd say half of the mineralization is in the form of a quartz spodumene intergrowth. So finer grain uh, spodumene needles. And then there is some coarse spot as well. So, but that's the exact feed that they have. They deal with that tanko. So this is not um, anything they can't deal with. Uh, we'll be doing some, um, you know, off, off the... Uh, uh, off the grapevine uh, work with Tanko. Or they're going to have a look at our, our potential feed. They'll do some test work themselves yeah. and see how that's going to perform in their circuit. And that's kind of a key step, right, in moving forward with them on yeah. this concept. So it's not yeah. a done deal, but it's well advanced, our discussions with them. And presumably they're going to suck their teeth and go, ooh, oh, no, we're going to have to penalize you for this this has got all kinds of that's, what, problems. that's why we have to do our own work yeah on the side yeah no we have a good relationship with tanko yeah yeah but it's, it's got to work both sides yeah it. for um, sure <clears throat> so when you talk about an integrated pre-feasibility study it's effectively a capital scheduling aspect it's a shared gna it's shared yeah. kind of workshops and um equipment labor yeah. everything yeah. yeah 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 but it's not not sharing the process circuits no no there may be some elements of that but you know it's uh, you get these circuit uh, you talk to any mill managers they want a dedicated feed consistent feed um they don't like to have to tweak or, or switch gears you know halfway through a year so we'll, we'll see how it all plays out but uh, i think that's right can you just remind me, for my benefit, as I said, re- repetition is key for me, um, the, the resources at um, and Mayville and Macqua, just in terms of, kind of global yeah. terms. So the pit constrained resources from the 2014 PA, which are going to be updated. Uh, there's m- more metallurgy since then uh, with improved recoveries. The metal prices will be updated, um, you know, the FX assumptions, that kind of thing. It, it's 26 million tons at Mayville, and it's about 1% copper equivalent. And we use that because it's copper dominant, usually about three parts copper to one part nickel at Mayville with some PG credits and cobalt. And then the macro pick and strain resource is 7 million tons, just, o- just over seven of about 1% nickel equivalent. It's mainly nickel and palladium. It's got very strong palladium credits, macro. And it's actually very high tenor which means the sulfide component, um, it doesn't need to be mass of sulfide to get you over 1% nickel grade. We're often dealing with 10, 15% uh, sort of weakly net textured sulfide at, Ma- at MACWA to deliver that kind of 1% nickel equivalent or higher. And we're seeing consistently it grades over one gram in the sort of the core of the deposit and up to two grams of palladium locally. And um, talk to me about oxidation at both oxidation levels um, at both of these. It's minimal. It's, it's all glaciated terrain. There's very little in the way of deep weathering. There is none. Yeah, sometimes we get a, a fracture system or something that groundwater has done a little bit of you know, alteration on, but the, there's no significant uh, uh, oxidation here at all. So in percentage terms, it's a, it's, it's a kind of a skim off the top rather than... Yeah. F- few few yeah. centimeters really okay okay that's that's really interesting it's rare to get uh, nickel sulfides at surface and uh, what's the what's the morphology of that the geometry of that seven million tons is it so something that can be taken tab- it's, it's a tabular ore body uh, both of them are actually Mabel and Macqua uh, they both have a bit of a plunge on them um, but generally speaking 
it, it holds together from surface to the depths that we've drilled it off and both deposits remain open at depth and to some extent a long strike. So it's, you know, the May Mayville, it's 30 meters kind of on average thickness for the higher grade part. Maqua, it's uh, sort of 10 to 20 meters average thickness, uh, generally tabular, generally conforming to the basal contact of the host ultramafic intrusion uh, at Maqua and mafic, ultramafic at Mayville. Okay, so it's, it's, it's a, um, kind of a magmatic sulfide. More or less. Classic magmatic sulfide. These are all, you, you used the word originally pit constraints. So these are all open. Pits. Yes. Yep. Um, and you've, you've, done, you've done some more drilling, haven't you, recently? Is, is it, yes. Is expansion, infill? So the uh, drilling we did uh, in uh, last winter, we did 18 holes on the main, or sorry, the Northwest Dyke at Donner Lake. And that was really the first systematic drilling of that dike. And we proved up the uh, sort of grade thickness over 600 meters of strike. It's still partly open. Uh, Definitely it's open at depth, but partly open along strike. And then uh, MACWA, we did 18 holes. And these were to test uh, four prominent geophysical anomalies that were either directly below the pit constrained resources or adjacent to that pit resource or that pit shell. So we'll be releasing the results for those holes uh, any day now, actually, the first set of results um, for the MACWIC uh, deposit itself. Uh, we did have uh, some drilling on another deposit just to these called the Barton. That's a former underground mine. Uh, it was a couple million tons taken out at about 1% nickel in the 70s by Falkenberg. Then we'd put out the results of one hole, which were encouraging. There'll be more results for that area as well. But the focus is at MACWA to really, you know, build up the higher grade part of, of that resource and, and show potential to expand potentially uh, into a higher grade underground operation. But for now, it's really to augment the current resources around the pit. And have you publicly spoken about those 18 holds at MACWA and the four geochemical anomalies. So, so I can't ask you any questions about, you know, what you've seen. No, I mean, it's coming uh, very shortly. We had, uh, you know, 18 holes. I don't know how many thousands of samples, but the backlog in the analyses for, for that program was significantly higher than or longer than we thought. With Donner Lake, the reason those results came out, as I, you and I were talking about, we're really only sampling the pegmatite themselves there. So there's maybe 10, 15, 20 samples per hole. We we rush, paid for rush on those. Um, so yep. that's the difference. And, and you've got good visual correlation. You know exactly when you're yeah. in, in the, in the, in the, in the pegmatite. Um, okay. So um, uh, I, 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 <laughs> it's one of the things where I can't ask too many questions, too many direct questions about your kind of what your work plan is, because that will impact uh, your disclosure. But um, <clears throat> So you've said that <clears throat> the principal work for the for Macqua and Mayville is an, is effectively a new mineral resource estimate that will be wrapped up in the first half of next year. Does Correct. That, are you planning on further um, drilling at Macqua and Mayville? And it, it, you know, is, is are you looking at second half work that will feed into a cutoff date? I don't know. Let's say in early December, so you can all end of the year, so that you can then focus on the MRE. At the beginning of the year? I think, you know, realistically, we we look at each project separately. Donner Lake is a very clear drill plan. We're working with key P resource modelers right now to lay out the drill plan and to to, uh, go ahead with that starting as soon as we get our permits. And like I said, the permit application uh, uh, in all of these projects, they're all well advanced. We just got our MACWA drill permit, so we could start that program anytime. So Donner Lake, it's for resource delineation, the maiden resource for the property for lithium. MACWA, it's exploration and trying to add to or improve on the grade of the uh, potential feed and the overall sort of economics of, of a pit. Uh, but that's probably longer term. I think we're, gonna, we're working with the existing resources, the existing drilling with MICON to get this PEA updated to show the really, you know, positive light that this uh, integrated Macwa Mavo project sits in. And in Mavo, we haven't spoken much about the exploration potential there, but there is significant potential. There's untested geophysical anomalies 
uh, directly adjacent to the, the main deposit. There's a potential feeder zone or keel, we call it the keel target, never been drilled. It's vertically extensive, goes for over a kilometer, uh, really boomer uh, EM anomaly that, that uh, we've got our sights on for this next program. Uh, there's a zone directly south of that that uh, looks to be improving with depth that there's no deep drilling on. And then there's the PGM zone that we discovered in 2011, 2012, which sits uh, sort of on the eastern end and just south of the M2 deposit. So all of this is on the radar for, for drill testing as part of the exploration at Mayville. But again, none of this is likely to impact the PEA. It'll impact the PFS potentially in the FS. So there's a big okay. body of work there to do to really test the full potential of the properties. Thank you. That's, that, that's really useful information. Two, two questions immediately spring out from that for me. Um, one is you talk about getting the drill permits at MACWA, but you've just had you've just done 18 holes there, which mm. you presumably had full permits for. So do you have to go back for a new permit for every round of drilling you do? Well, we've had some very interesting and positive discussions with the mines minister, new minister. I think it's the third new minister for this portfolio in about a 12 month period. And uh, the, the fellow's name is Greg Ness, but anyway, he's been very supportive. They see a potential hub, as I mentioned to you before, with Tanko as kind of an anchor operation for rare metal, battery metal production in what they call the capital region of Manitoba, so the Winnipeg area. Um, so that's uh, something the government's working with industry on. Uh, potentially you could see something like a, a lithium hydroxide plant being built in Winnipeg or in the area. So this is longer term vision, but in the short term, what can we do to help you uh, with the permitting process and make it uh, more streamlined, more transparent? And they've already made big changes, we've already seen the benefit of those changes. Uh, so we put in our, our MACWA permit application, you have to do that annually. And so the, the, right. they, they normally only cover to the end of the winter, the freeze up period. Then you put in another permit, uh, you take your results, you plan the next series of holes. That process may now get extended so that you can put in for three years, possibly even five years yeah. at a time. But, but for that, you need a long-term view and that's the kind of thing a PEA and PFS would give you a very clear program to lay out and present to the government. And uh, you know, we've got great support from them and the local First Nation in this process. And uh, we don't expect to have any more complications. It's been a lot better. Thank you. That's a really useful explanation. Um, and that the other question I had was kind of when are the timing of, for example, the Mayville um, drilling? Is that also for the second half of this year or is that going to be something that you'll plan and budget for later on uh, in parallel with the PEA later next year? No, we can manage all of this at once. I think we'd probably take on the results of the field program uh, to really sharpen our, our budget and planning for, you know, uh, an integrated drill program, which is exploring at both Donner Lake and at Mayville. Yeah. So, so that drill could do both. Um, and we can run a continuous program you know, starting this fall through the winter. Yeah, okay. okay, good. In parallel um, with the resource drilling at Donner Lake, which is a priority. Yeah. Worth talking about Bannockburn, the deal you've done with Canada, Canada Nickel. Let's mention Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so we finally uh, received the shares from Canada Nickel. We had a negotiation process of a couple of months with them, and we saw them as the best home for Bannockburn. It was not going to be front and center for us as we shift our attention to Southeast Manitoba and really try and push forward with an exciting uh, and unique project as we've discussed. And they were, uh, you know, very good with us in the negotiation. I think we got, you know, fair deal. Um, we maybe could have held out for more. You never know. You take the deal when it's on the table. <laughs> Excuse me. It gives us exposure to them as a company. They've really been consolidating the Timmins district with, uh, you know, the Crawford ankle anchor deposit there. And now adding Bannockburn as a lookalike to Crawford, but with some high grade kind of conventional chromatiate uh, nickel sulfide already known on that property. So we wish them all the best. Uh, we received 2 million shares. They're in escrow for four months. Um, but, uh, you know, effectively it's uh, 
you know, liquid uh, securities that can be used for whatever purpose is going forward as required. Yeah. Um, but we don't have any immediate plans to, to sell the shares. And we're, we're still sitting with about four, four and a half million dollars in uh, hard dollars in, in the bank. And that gets us through to the end of the year. And you know, we're looking at other uh, financing um, over the next few months. Lots of things uh, we could do. There's lots of interest in our assets, uh, especially on the lithium side. Yeah. So stay tuned. Yeah. No, Dave, I was impressed um, with your company, um, the, the, you know, the, the, the broader company and you and the team. Um, <clears throat> the last time we spoke and uh, nothing's changed um, apart from the market. Uh, the market, <laughs> yeah. And and actually your results, are, you know, they're, they're consistent and uh, there's, there's progress there. So um, uh, I very much look forward to seeing the nickel um, results. Um, we should get you off this phone call and get you busy writing that news release. All right. Um, it's almost done. Okay. <laughs> Good. Um, uh, great. I look forward to um, the, the next update. Thank you, Merlin. Always a pleasure.